Good evening aspirants. Welcome to Daily News Analysis by Shankara Ace Academy. Today's date is 6th October 2023. Displayed here are the list of topics we are going to see today. Now before we getting into the discussion, I have an important announcement. It is regarding the pre-storming prelims to series. Batch 2 of pre-storming series is going to start on 15th October 2023. There are 48 tests including GS and CSAT. I have an another important announcement. We are starting a new video series for analyzing the Indian Express newspaper. The video will be published every Sunday starting from this Sunday. So this is the announcement. Now let us get into the discussion. Look at this news. The Nobel Prize in Literature for 2023 has been given to John Foss from Norway. The Nobel Prize in Literature is unique among other Nobel Prizes because it is not awarded for specific scientific or humanitarian achievements. Instead, it recognizes the lifetime work of an author and for their overall contributions to literature, poetry and literary excellence. So the Nobel Prize for Literature is not awarded for a specific book but for entire work of an author. Know that Rabindranath Tagore was the first Asian and Indian to get a Nobel Prize in 1913 in literature. So in this discussion, we shall revise some basics about Nobel Prize. The Nobel Prize were awarded from 1901. Initially, Nobel Prize was only given for five fields, that is physics, chemistry, literature, medicine and peace. In addition to these original five fields, Nobel Prize in Economic Sciences was created in 1968. Now how the winner is decided? See, every year thousands of people around the world are eligible to submit nominations for Nobel Prizes. All the nominations will be kept secret for another 50 years. And moreover, the judges are also prohibited from discussing their judgments for 50 years. So we can't know why they chose a particular person or why they rejected others. This is to ensure the confidentiality of the process. Now who decides the Nobel Prize for each field? See, the Nobel Prize for Physics and for Chemistry are selected by Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences. The Nobel Prize for Medicine is chosen by Nobel Assembly at Karolinska Institute. The Literature Nobel Prize is selected by Swedish Academy. The Nobel Peace Prize is selected by Norwegian Nobel Committee, which is appointed by Norwegian Parliament. The Nobel Prize in Economic Sciences is selected by Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences. See, every year the Nobel Prizes were awarded in Stockholm in Sweden, except the Nobel Peace Prize which is awarded at Oslo in Norway. Whether Nobel Prize has to be compulsorily given each year? No. Sometimes the Nobel Prizes can be withheld. This happens in two situations. If no worthy candidate is found or during extraordinary situations like World War, the Nobel Prizes may not be issued. See, during First World War, that is, from 1914 to 1918, Nobel Prizes were not awarded in various categories, including peace. During Second World War also, that is, from 1939 to 1943, no Nobel Prizes were given in several categories. Nobel Prize in Peace was also not awarded in 1948 because Nobel Committee did not find a suitable laureate who met Alfred Nobel's criteria. Also, the Nobel Prize in Literature was not awarded in 1972 due to the controversy surrounding the selection process. Note that recently, in 2018, the Nobel Prize in Literature was postponed to next year due to a sexual harassment scandal within the Swedish Academy which is responsible for selecting the Literature Nobel Prize. So these are the occasions where Nobel Prize was not issued. So this is the basic information about Nobel Prizes. Now we shall move to the next topic. Take a look at this editorial article. This article talks about national integrity. The author here highlights three important dimensions that constitute national integrity. The first dimension is about harmony and justice among caste. Second is harmony of religious communities. And third is common ground among various regional identities. So in this news article discussion, let us take up a main question regarding regionalism and religious diversity. And we will try to solve the question in this discussion. 
look at this question critically examine the role of regionalism and religious diversity in shaping the concept of national unity in india this question can be asked in gs paper 1 under the syllabus social empowerment communalism regionalism and secularism now we shall see how to approach this particular question see the keyword here is critically examine if the word examine is given we have to go deeper into the topic and explain the arguments in the favor of question when the word critically examine is given we have to examine both the positive and negative side of the issue mentioned in the question so in this question we are going to highlight both positive and negatives of the topic and then we can come to a balanced conclusion now let us start with an introduction in the introduction you can write about unity in diversity in india for example you can write the general point about india's diversity india is known for its diversity with a rich cultural heritage with several languages and different religious beliefs india remains united even without uniformity and it remains diverse without getting fragmented so in this way you can frame your introduction here you can also mention two factors that contribute to india's unity that is the regionalism and religious diversity which is asked in the question even though the regionalism and religious diversity are considered as a challenge they have a significant role in shaping the india's concept of national unity so in this way we write the introduction part now moving to the body of the question here you can split the answer into two parts first is about regionalism and second part is about religious diversity we have to explain the role of regionalism in shaping the national unity and the role of religious diversity in shaping the national unity we have to give the positives and negatives for each subheadings since this is a 15 mark question it is enough to generate 2 to 3 points under each subheading now let us see how to write the body of the answer first let us start with the regionalism explain what is regionalism in simple words regionalism is a strong attachment or loyalty shown by the people towards their own regions interest culture and identity it is like a sense of pride and belonging to specific geographic area within a larger nation regionalism has its own merits and challenges now explain how regionalism have contributed to national unity here you can give a simple subheading positives of regionalism or positive impacts of regionalism under the subheading you can explain these key points preservation of cultural diversity regionalism has promoted and preserved diverse regional cultures languages art forms and traditions so this helped to protect the unique identity of india that is unity in diversity next promotion of political decentralization regionalism promotes local governance through decentralization and community participation regional governments have better understanding about the specific need of people in a particular area this led to effective policy implementation and development at the grassroots level so this ultimately led to the strengthening of national unity next is economic growth regionalism addresses disparities through equitable resource distribution states like maharashtra gujarat and tamil nadu have been successful in attracting investments and they are having greater economic growth which has contributed to overall prosperity of nation and next regionalism promotes political pluralism see the regional parties ensure that voices of various regions are heard at the national level so thereby the regionalism ensures representation and democratic inclusion here you can see i have used keywords like political decentralization equitable resource distribution political pluralism democratic inclusion you can use these kinds of keywords or jargons in the main sentence writing in order to convey the points effectively now coming to the second subheading how regionalism impacts national unity that is we have to explain the negative impacts of regionalism 
here you can use recent issues as examples to support your arguments first is successionist movements regionalism also indicates excessive attachment to one's region in some instances regionalism has taken the form of successionist movements challenging the territorial integrity of india for example the khalistan demand bodo land demand and demand for greater nagalim so these movements have potential to disrupt national unity next is identity politics the competition and rivalry among various regions can result in tensions disputes and conflicts for example the recent manipur violence is caused by the rivalry between two tribal groups so conflicts like these between two groups within the same state can disrupt the national unity next is interstate conflicts regionalism can lead to conflicts between states over resources water sharing territorial disputes etc for example take the recent conflict like kaveri water dispute between karnataka and tamil nadu so issues like these caused by regionalism can hinder the national unity next is economic disparities uneven development or uneven resource distribution among various regions can lead to economic disparities so this will also affect the sense of national unity for example the belgium boundary dispute between karnataka and maharashtra so this is the first part of our answer now moving to the second part here we have to explain about religious diversity how it is positive for unity and how it is negative for unity of india here also first explain the positive aspects of religious diversity religious diversity has made india a pluralistic society where people of various faiths coexist see the national festivals like diwali eid christmas are celebrated with enthusiasm and participation by people of various religions these festivals provide an opportunity for people from different backgrounds to come together reinforcing the idea of shared national identity in india's constitution also we have the principle of secularism so this commitment to secularism has been a unifying force and has helped to maintain the religious harmony and national unity next is interfaith dialogue it means the religious diversity has encouraged interfaith dialogue and cooperation between various religions with many individuals and organizations working together to promote peace among different religious communities so these are the points about the positive impacts of religious diversity now we have to explain the negative impacts of religious diversity how it is challenged to national integrity see the religious diversity can lead to conflicts and communal tensions among different religious communities for example communal tensions during gujarat riots of 2002 next is politicization of religion in many cases the religion is misused for political purposes this can polarize society along religious lines leading to breakdown of national unity there are also discrimination and prejudice against various religious minorities so when these religious communities face unequal treatment it will lead to the loss of sense of national integrity next is rise of religious extremism so the religious extremism can pose threat to national integrity by promoting ideologies that reject principles of secularism and pluralism the radicalization within religious groups can also lead to violence and terrorism so these are some of the points about the negative impacts of religious diversity so this is the second part of our answer so in this way we have critically examined the question now coming to the conclusion part in conclusion we have to deliver a balanced judgment you can write like this india's success in maintaining national unity lies in effectively balancing the positive aspects of regionalism and religious diversity while addressing their negative aspects so this requires a commitment to secularism inclusivity and safeguarding the minority rights and promoting interfaith dialogue so in this way you can frame your own conclusion with a balanced view so this is all about this discussion now let us move to the next topic
Look at this editorial article. The article is speaking about diabetes mellitus. It provides us some data from recent study on diabetes in India. The article also points out reasons for increased risk of diabetes. And finally, the article suggests some measures to control diabetes in India. So in this discussion, we will understand all the important points mentioned in this editorial. Before that, let us understand some basics about diabetes mellitus. See, diabetes mellitus is commonly known as diabetes, which is a chronic disease. Here, chronic disease means a disease that has long-lasting conditions and such disease can be controlled but not cured. So, diabetes is a chronic disease which means it can be controlled but cannot be cured completely. See, diabetes occurs when our body cannot process the blood sugar levels properly. As we all know, when we eat food, our body breaks the food into glucose. After that, glucose is sent into bloodstream. And finally, the glucose enters into the cell. See, when the glucose enters into the bloodstream, the pancreas get triggered to release a hormone called insulin. This insulin hormone helps to control the glucose level in our body. This is the normal process. But in case of diabetes, the pancreas does not make enough insulin. So this leads to high level of glucose in the blood. This condition is called diabetes. Now we will see about the causes of diabetes. The primary cause of diabetes is insulin resistance. As we saw just now, when our cells in the body don't use insulin properly, it increases the level of glucose in the blood and causes diabetes. Now what are the main reasons for insulin resistance? See several factors and conditions like obesity, lack of physical activity, eating unhealthy food, hormonal imbalances, genetic disorders, etc. So these are the reasons for insulin resistance which causes diabetes. Secondly, pancreatic damage can also cause diabetes. See, if our pancreas cannot produce enough insulin, then it also leads to diabetes. So these are the two main causes of diabetes. That is insulin resistance and pancreatic damage. Now we will look at the points from editorial. First, let us see the data from recent study. Recently, in June 2023, a study was conducted by Madras Diabetes Research Foundation in collaboration with Indian Council of Medical Research and Union Health Ministry. The study revealed that 11.4% of India's population are living with diabetes. That is, 10.13 crore people have diabetes in India. The study also highlighted 15.3% of India's population are having pre-diabetic conditions. From this data, we can observe that diabetes is one of the worst conditions that affect significant population of India. So the government should act quickly to reduce the burden of diabetes. The author of the editorial also highlighted the data from World Health Organization. According to WHO, the consumption of unhealthy processed foods and beverages like carbonated drinks, instant cereals, chips, instant noodles, ice cream, processed meat products and so on are the major reasons for prevalence of diabetes in India. The author of the editorial highlighted that sale of beverages has fallen in many high income countries in last 20 years. So in order to compensate for the loss, Companies are now focusing on low and middle income countries like India. This leads to increased consumption of processed foods and beverages by vulnerable population. So this in turn increase the risk of diabetes in India according to the author. Now finally, let us see some steps taken by Indian government to support the diabetes patients. Firstly, the government is providing free essential medicines to diabetes patients under initiatives like Pradhan Mantri Bharatiya Janashaudi Pariyojana Free Drugs Service Initiative by National Health Mission, under the Janashaudi Pariyojana scheme, quality generic medicines including insulin are given to all diabetes patients at affordable prices. The government has also extended the treatment for diabetes patients under Ayushman Bharat Pradhan Mantri Janna Yojana. Under this scheme, the diabetes patients 
may avail inpatient care in any of the approved hospitals so these are some of the measures taken by indian government to support diabetes patients so that's all about this discussion we have seen the basics of diabetes disease the causes for it and important points mentioned in the editorial and the steps taken by indian government to help diabetes patients so this is all about this discussion now let us move to the next topic take a look at this news article the news is that 14 people were confirmed to death from flash floods in sikkim moreover the search is still continuing for missing one or two people which includes 22 army personnel so the flash floods in sikkim have occurred due to overflow of water in teesta river this overflow is because of melting of glacier in lonak lake so basically the melting of glaciers in lonak lake has led to overflow of water into teesta river so this is the reason for flash floods which occurred in sikkim recently so this is the crux of the news article let us understand flash floods from prelims perspective first what is flash flood flash floods are a sudden and rapid flood that occur within a short period of time in other words flash floods are floods caused by excessive rainfall within a duration of less than 6 hours this flooding will happen within hours of heavy rainfall or due to intense water accumulation events like glacial outburst or cloud burst now we shall see about the factors responsible for flash flood the important factor is very heavy rain the other factors like steepness of terrain nature of soil also increases the risk of flash flood see in urban areas the presence of man made structures encroachments and blocking of drainage system can lead to urban flash flood there are also other factors like failure of dams sudden release of water from natural reservoirs may also lead to flash floods now let us understand the vulnerability of india for floods according to the data released by assam state disaster management authority india is the worst flood affected country in the world after bangladesh the report also states that india accounts for 1/5 of the global death count due to flood related events the main reason behind this is india's monsoon this is because nearly 75% of our rainfall is concentrated over a short period of 4 months that is from june to september as a result the rivers will have heavy flow of water during this months so it may result in occurrence of flash floods also note that the flash floods are accompanied by landslides which are sudden movements of rock or debris along with the flow of water so these are common incidents in mountainous region which lead to destruction of life and property recently there were flash floods and landslides in uttarakhand and himachal pradesh and now it is also happening in sikkim finally we shall see what are the steps taken by government in controlling the effects of flash flood firstly the indian meteorological department has been using doppler radars flash flood forecasting and warning system to predict the occurrence of flash flood then national disaster management authority has advised that low lying areas along the rivers should be regulated by state disaster management authorities or district disaster management authorities then the central water commission in collaboration with the state governments also check for landslides and blockages in rivers with the help of satellite images so this is all about this discussion now let us move to the next topic look at this news article it is about updation of india space policy the director of in space has said that the fdi policy of india space sector is going to be updated here in space is a regulatory body under department of space it authorizes space activities for both government and non government entities so in our discussion today we shall see about the highlights of india space policy first we shall look at the vision of this policy see the vision of india space policy is to encourage and develop a flourishing commercial presence in space 
This conveys that private sector is accepted as critical stakeholder in entire value chain of space economy. The government has created four distinct entities which are in space that is Indian National Space Promotion and Authorization Center NSIL that is New Space India Limited Department of Space and ISRO. So these four agencies are committed to promotion of space sector in India. Let us see them one by one. Firstly in space. It will provide a single window clearance and authorization for space launches establishing launch pads, buying and selling of satellites etc. It will also share technologies, products, processes and best practices with non-government entities and private companies. Secondly, NSIL New Space India Limited It is a central public sector enterprise under Government of India. This was established in 2019 and comes under the functioning of Department of Space. This NSIL is headquartered at Bangalore. So it is a commercial arm of ISRO and has the responsibility of making Indian industries to take up high technology space related activities. Basically, it strives for the promotion and commercial exploitation of products from space industry. There is an another organization called Antrix Corporation. NSIL is different from Antrix Corporation. See the Antrix will handle the commercial deals for ISRO. The NSIL will deal with capacity building of local industry for space manufacturing. So these two organizations collaborate with ISRO to promote the space sector. Next is regarding Department of Space. It will provide overall policy guidelines for implementing space technologies. It will also create an appropriate mechanism to resolve disputes arising out of space activity. Fourthly, there were changes made with ISRO. ISRO will no longer do the existing practice of manufacturing any space systems. Instead, it will focus primarily on research and development of new space technologies. So these were the changes made in India's space policy. With this, we conclude this discussion and let us move to the next topic. Now we have come to the prelims practice question discussion. Look at the first question. It is about Nobel Prize. Look at the first statement. Nobel Prize cannot be given to more than three members at a time. Yes, this statement is correct. Self-nomination is usually allowed except for Nobel Peace Prize. This statement is incorrect because self-nomination is usually not allowed for other fields except for Nobel Peace Prize. So there is self-nomination only for Nobel Peace Prize and not for other categories. Look at the third statement. They can be awarded posthumously which is after the death. This statement is incorrect. The Nobel Peace Prize cannot be awarded posthumously. First statement is alone correct. So the answer is option A. Now look at the second question. It is about in space. What is the purpose of Indian National Space Promotion and Authorization Center launched by Government of India? The correct answer is option B. To facilitate the participation of private sector companies in space activities. Now look at the third question. It is about flash floods. Flash floods are caused when rainfall creates flooding in less than 6 hours. Yes, this statement is correct. Flash floods commonly happens more rivers are narrow and steep. Yes, this statement is also correct. Because in the narrow and steep rivers, water easily flows out and causes flooding in the surrounding areas. So the question asks about incorrect statements. So the correct answer is option D, neither one nor two. Now this is the main question for you today. Interested aspirants can write the answer and post it in the comment section. With this we have come to the end of the discussion. If you like the video, please share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to Shankara AS Academy YouTube channel. Thank you.